South Africa, lovely to be back. Happy New Year. Welcome to Afternoon Express. We're live on SABC3. Thank you very much for joining us. I'm Bonang Mateba. It feels like forever that we've actually said that. It's the beginning of a brand new year. Yeah. And I mean, I'm still in holiday mode. I don't know yeah. about you, yeah. but I think it's going to take yeah. a while for my brain to get from that chilled mode yeah. into work. I'm definitely <laughs> still sleeping. I can't believe I'm at work, but luckily it's just play. I'm Bonnie exactly. Bully. <laughs> it's going to be another exciting hour of inspiration and all things amazing. So make sure you sit back and relax. And today, we're also going to be taking a look at those promises we make to ourselves yep. every single year, right? New Year's yeah. resolutions. Today, we have a psychologist in the loft who's going to be telling us and showing us how to stick to them. I think I've already broken some of my resolutions. I didn't bother making any. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> we're also going to be taking a look at what our skills and Danilo got over got up to over the holidays mm -hmm. and also we just chat about some of the things we're looking forward to in 2016. Of course. We also have a media specialist and an author of Let's Talk Frankly, JJ Tabani on the left, and he's going to be telling us his view on what he thinks about South Africa. But you know, one of my, not that I made New Year's resolutions, yeah. but last year my resolution was to learn how to cook. This year I've decided Shh. to actually not cook for exactly, myself. We must get the man to do it. Danilo, <laughs> what are you today? Well, that might have been your New Year's resolution. Mine was to make sure that I try and lose waiting this year it's clearly not going to happen because we're right here back in the kitchen on afternoon express welcome to it my name is Daniela Crystal. lovely to be back in your living room south africa now 2015 was a big year for us on afternoon express you know everyone was loving how much claire was involved in this kitchen we found somebody to be our resident for 2016 who maybe is not as beautiful but damn can he cook clem pedro is on the show i try a little bit sorry what? it's because <laughs> you, you you've got the male the male parts i think that's what it is it's just what it is so clem really cool to have you on the show you are resident for the next while claire's still going to be in and out helping us make a few dishes she as we go be, along. She'll be throughout the year, yeah. So what are we kicking off the year, kicking off the year with? Uh, just from my side, it's mm. so amazing to be here this year. It's an incredible honor. Mm -hmm. So we're going to start the year off on a light note, keep it fresh and easy for 2016. Jeannie's smiling. Starting today. So for, it's all for Jeannie. <laughs> <laughs> what are you making? So we're not doing a normal cucumber salad today. We're smashing cucumbers. Lecker. That's how we're going to do it. That's lots of, lots of fun. I'm really sad I'm not in the kitchen with you today because we could have a lot of fun smashing those cucumbers. But don't forget, if you guys want to get this recipe, the first of the year, make sure you go to www.afternoonexpress.co.za. You can find the shopping list available for you over there. And make sure your New Year's resolution is to make sure you cook with us right here on the show. So 2015 is done and dusted. 2016 is here. So many things happened on the holiday. And we want to share all of those details with you. Absolutely, we do. But Danilo, you have to come join us because we're going to be taking a look at all our incredible chance. moments over the festive season. What's your favourite Afternoon Express presenters we're doing? How was your holiday, Danilo? Let me start with you. What did okay. you do? What, what, you know, so any I kept highlights? it nice and local. Lots of highlights. I think this year was a very chilled one. I didn't go do anything crazy. I was with my parents in Johannesburg mm -hmm. um, and my brothers left to London so they've got empty nest syndrome and really want to spend some time with oh, us. Sweet. They've just adopted a brand new rescue puppy and he's so cute. He's That's like so a cute. cross a collie and something. I cross um, a, f a French bulldog or something. And he's so cute. Oh, uh, oh, look, there he is. He Boston put his little Christmas Terrier. Like, his name is Don't Rocky. Don't posh and say French yeah, Boston <laughs> Terrier. That's like, yeah, I'm sure there's some French in him. Oh, and he's so cute. Spicy. Shade yeah. queen. So yeah. that was, like, that was yeah. Christmassy kind of thing. And then moved on to, uh, to went to a party in Plet uh, with a really cool beer that I absolutely enjoy. So I had a nice party out that really? side. With a cool beer? Yeah, it was oh. with a cool beer, but also a cool beer brand that was busy wow, sorting it out, which was cool. awesome. You are just so, too hot. Yeah, yeah, that was really cool. And then, yeah, chilled New Year's by the beach at Mossel Bay. Sounds yeah, fun. Nice. Bon nice. Bizzle? I also kept it local. I went out to a place called Stanford. It's just yes. past Hermanus for a couple of days. I took Beautiful. my mom and our whole family. There's a pic of my, the girls. Oh, the yeah. girls. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Look at that ball day. I know, right? Baby. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I was very beach ready. Okay. And then I came back and did a bit of work and I've just been chilling, really mm. relaxing. Yeah, we can uh, that was like out in, in Simon's Town. Um, uh, yeah, clearly my detox was... Um, Interrupted, Stunning. really I mean, interrupted. Girl, work it. <laughs> work it for the grab. Do it for the grab. I you had a very so funny moment in the lift this morning for yeah. you guys. Someone said to me, like, oh, Bonang must have had the most incredible holiday, and here you are, like, celebrating your holiday locally. So I'm like, oh, fine, Bonang, yeah, well, tell us what's your holiday. Obviously, now. I didn't get much of a holiday because I was working this oh. past Saturday, obviously, in Cape Town. I was uh, the official spokesperson for the Queen's Plate, yes. so that's what I did. That was absolutely phenomenal. Yeah. Uh, Jeannie, and I, Jeannie and I were there together. We, we had, had an amazing tons time. of fun. Bonang made an amazing date. Uh, yes, <laughs> it was lovely, lovely, with all the, you know, local celebs. But I didn't get enough time to relax, and then on... Uh, 
a couple of weekends ago, I was hosting an event in East London called the, called the Chase Festival. Yeah. And there I was, taking Sheesh. pictures in Southwest with all everyone that was there. Looking so thank you very incredible. much, everyone, for coming. That's awesome. Yeah. That's Jeans? Fun. And you, Jeannie? So I did something that I've never done in my entire, entire life. I took off a few weeks mm -hmm. yeah. and wore no makeup and no oh. heels. Oh, packed you? the dogs and Ooh. surfboards in a car and that just went so and went into nature. Climbed mountains. Wow, didn't man. wear heels. I was in flats Were the you whole on a time. Vacation. Was vacation. there a bay? <laughs> was there a bay? <laughs> Maybe there was a bay. <laughs> <laughs> Bye. I love that. <laughs> but, but today we're talking obviously about New Year's resolutions. Do you mm. make any? Do you have any? Do you have I think so. I never really make New Year's resolutions because they disappear after the first few weeks because yeah. everyone forgets about it. You forget yeah. about it too, and yeah. no one keeps you accountable. But I do think my big things are internationally. I would definitely want to go on a trip to uh, um, uh, uh, Vietnam and Cambodia. I have to do that this year. Backpacking, roughing mm -hmm. it out. Mm -hmm. Six pack by December. It's mm -hmm. coming. Bonnie can help you with that. Okay, mm -hmm. Bonnie's Bonnie's mm -hmm. doing well. Yeah. So I'm working on it. Working mm -hmm. last year was like mm -hmm. the sort of we'll preparing. Keep you in, 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 Thank you. In, in this, on the yeah, out of the kitchen the and yeah, yes. onto those push-ups. Okay, done and dusted. <laughs> and then I think my third thing is just from a business perspective. I really, I really want to get into to starting my company. I think that's nice. one of the things I really that's want to awesome. do. That's awesome. Yeah. Well, um, mine is to one get my life. <laughs> get your life. <laughs> that's, that's always my resolution. Yep, yeah. <laughs> Your life, girl. <laughs> I, I started doing a communication science degree uh, last year, and I'm going to carry on with that. Mm -hmm. And I want to do more traveling, definitely. Me too. That's yeah. one of my yeah. resolutions. Yeah. Lots and lots of yeah. travels. Less work for me this year, yeah. and more quality mm. you know, yeah. time alone. I've also yeah. decided that every single morning, as soon as I get up, I'm going to read 60 pages of a book every single day. Oh, I love that. that. Every yeah. single day. I love that, that is my resolution. Yeah. Reading for me is yeah. a different, and then yeah. making more time available to the people that I love, because I'm always yeah. working, always yeah. traveling. Oh, you got yeah. bae. You got <laughs> bae, girl. It's a bae. You got it's a bae. It's a bae, bae. Bae? Bae? You're the bae. Seize the bae. <laughs> Seize the bae. Seize the bae. <laughs> Seize the bae. <laughs> but anyway, if you want to tell us how your festive season was this, let us know right now at Afternoon Chat. Uh, hashtag Afternoon Express. We'll be back with more right here on ACBC3 <laughs> after the break. <laughs> Salati Plantation Select adds subtle sweetness to toffees, caramel, bran muffins or sprinkled into a spicy curry. Salati. Always good, always sweet. Welcome back to Afternoon Express here on SABC3. I'm back in the kitchen with Clem and we're making something cucumbery and prawnish. A salad. You're making something cucumbery. And I'm going to smash something. You're going to so smash it? Smash something. I'm going to do the prawns. I'll talk about that in a minute. But let's talk about... About what's in here. Cool. It's a cucumber. So we're smashing it today. We're not going to just chop it or crush it. Mm -hmm. We're smashing. And oh, smashing wow. is... Is that the new buzzword in the kitchen? What it does, it just releases a lot more flavor and texture. Oh, so you're not just oh, getting of course, one dimension. Of course. So what I'm going to do is, let me do this for you first. Okay. Just to make it a little easier. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So we're using a clean tablecloth. Okay. I'm going to split it in the middle just so you don't end up smashing all day. Just like that. Right. Oh, we can get that one aside. Right. And I brought you a cool smashing tool for the day. I see this. I, I bet you can also use one of those meat tenderizers, right? Totally. Yeah, that would be great as well. Yeah, yeah. So now there's no right or wrong way to do it. You just go crazy. I always okay? do it right, though. You know about me. You know? Go, okay, go okay, for go it. Go. So the idea is, like I said, we're smashing it, releasing all those cucumber juices, more flavor. <laughs> and as you can see, I didn't take all the skin off of it. There's a bit of flavor in the skin uh -huh, as well. Uh -huh. So a little of the skin stays on. Okay. Cool. So you keep on smashing. I'm going to do the prawns. So today we're going to cook and shock prawns. So we're smashing cucumbers and we're shocking prawns. Shocking the prawns. Wow. So all that is, wow. is just... Um, oh my gosh, nothing's happened. And I was smashing so hard. I thought hard. you said you can do it. Okay, I know, cool. You know what? Like, what's Use supposed to happen? It. You keep on going, just bash. You, you, as good hard idea. as I can. There we go. Even that one, like I said, pound it down like that. There we go. You keep on going. You keep on going. So the prawns going into... Happening. Just keep on... And you just okay. fist like that as well. There we go. Like I said, there's no right or wrong way to do it. <laughs> so... Um, <laughs> Prawns are going into boiling salted water. Okay. And all that has to happen is they cook for about three minutes. You, you can see they're a bit pink already, mm -hmm. but you'll see they go a little, they'll go firmer as well, then you know it's done. Okay. So we don't want to overcook any of the prawns. So what happens right. is as soon as it's done, straight into ice water. That stops them Why? cooking further. Oh, it stops them cooking Besides, further. Besides um, stopping them cooking further, it actually retains the texture. Okay. So you get a bit of chew to the prawns in a good way. Okay. In a good way. All right. And it stops you from getting a, a soggy prawn. too much chew means it's overcooked. Yes. Okay. Exactly. And that's what you don't want. So the, the idea of this salad is all about texture. So the crushed cucumber, the smashed cucumber, uh -huh. with the prawns. And it's all about just different textures in your mouth instead of just having sliced cucumber and normal right, prawns. You right. know what I mean? Okay, okay. So for this uh, salad, we're going to do it with some um, whole wheat noodles. 
everything's mm-hmm. chilled. It's summer. We are in the middle of a heat wave. And we're getting wave. healthy. Every, exactly. So it's yeah. everything chilled, everything light, fresh. So you keep it. That's exactly how you do it, you know? Ooh, okay. And it's making you work today. Yeah. <laughs> so, cool. So these are going to take about three minutes, and okay. you're going to keep on smashing. So like I said, the idea is to keep everything light and fresh. So we're actually going to do a fat-free dressing today. Fat-free. Mm. Asian-inspired, some rice wine, vinegar, some um, no soy. We're going to leave the soy out as well. Okay. Is that too strong a taste? I think it just does maybe overpower this, mm-hmm. the side a little bit. Mm-hmm. So, so aromatics like ginger, garlic, prawn. Right. I mean, the prawn with the chili, you know, all those yummy flavors we love so much. Yes, yes. All banged together in a bowl with the cold noodles. Okay. How does that sound? That sounds absolutely amazing. And how's your cucumber looking? Um, I'm working on that. Are you doing I'm well? I'm working on that, Jaya. Okay, cool. <laughs> <laughs> Look at that, well done. Some of it is smashed. There we go. And that's, you keep on going. Like I said, there's no <sighs> right, no wrong way about doing it. So I you think just I'm just going to pile it, and then that might actually make yeah, it easier. If that's exactly what you want to do, you need to go for it. Okay. So the prawns are almost there. I mean, it's coming back up to a simmer again. Okay. And I got my ice water ready. Right. So like I said, as soon as the prawns are done in the ice water, your cucumbers go into that big mixing bowl in the end once it's all done. Okay. The chilled prawns in there as well. Mm-hmm. And the next part, I'll show you how to put the dressing together, how to mix it all together. Already. Do we season the prawns at all? There's enough, we're, doing, we're using fish sauce in our dressing. That's mm-hmm. where your seasoning's gonna come from, the, the saltiness. Okay. So no salt, no added sodium at all today. Okay, we're keeping cool. it light and fresh. Awesome. So uh, don't forget to pop over to our website, afternoonexpress.co.za for the smashing recipe. I don't know if I'm winning, but I'm actually starting to like- You know what, if, if you knock out, just cucumber. go for it, go for oh. it. It's all about 2016, doing things differently. So we're doing it differently in the kitchen today. Let's get back to Jeannie with Dawn Ellingson on the couch. <laughs> Watching Bonnie in the kitchen is definitely one of the most entertaining parts of my day. Now, it's the 31st of December, and while you're sinking your teeth into the last cupcake of the year, you quietly promise yourself that tomorrow everything is going to change. You're getting a gym contract, you're only eating fresh vegetables and nuts for the next 365 years, and you're finally going to learn how to play the piano or the guitar or whatever. And you promise to be nicer to your neighbor who keeps playing music until 2 a.m a weeknight. Now, we all make these New Year's resolutions, but how do we make sure that we can stick to them, and why do we always wait until the start of the new year to do this? We're joined by psychometrist Dawn Dawn Ellingson to take a deeper look at the phenomenon of the New Year's resolution. Welcome, Dawn. Hi, thanks, Jenny. I thought it was so funny. I arrived at work today, and the first thing I did when I ran an S today, saw today's yes. schedule and saw that my very first interview is with the psychometrist. <laughs> I thought, well, that's one way for me to start the year. Good the one. irony was not lost on me. Oh, I'm so pleased. <laughs> so why do we set New Year's resolutions? Where does the, the tradition come from? And why do we as a society place so much value on them? Jenny, I think the thing is, if you have a look back through the ages, It's a sense of renewal. The Babylonians did it. The Romans did it. Our medieval knights also. Really? Does it date that far back? Yes. They had the vow of the peacock, which was a a revow, as it were, about being chivalrous for the rest of the year. So it's almost a reminder of what we want for ourselves. And I think that's what's really important to remember. But sometimes it's a wish and sometimes it's a resolution. And okay. there's a very big difference. So there is a huge difference between something you just want to achieve, that's, that's exactly what you said, Absolutely. a wish, and something that's a very achievable goal. Do you think we set these kind of targets that are achievable and are realistic, perhaps? Well, you know what? I think the first thing is it's wonderful to have wishes. <clears throat> um, and it's to understand that we need to do something with those wishes. So you've got to turn that wish into something that is achievable. A lot of people, they have these wishes, I want to lose weight. And that's a lovely thing to wish (laughs) for. But unless unless you're going to actually set those little goals and say, right, this is what I want to do by this date, this is what I want to do by the next, you're not going to achieve it. It's it's a dream. So it's about taking your resolution and it's about breaking it down into something that is achievable. Yeah, so setting smaller little goals. Setting smaller little goals, giving yourself a time frame, but yeah. also making them achievable. Um, yeah. In the Sunday papers, there was some uh, uh, body fitness uh, expert talking about someone who wanted to basically exercise until she said until she was ill. I mean, that's not really going to help Uh anyone, you know. (laughs) No pain, no gain. That's a healthy start. No, it's not. (laughs) Not. Yeah, exactly, because you're going to do it once, you're going to hate it so much, you're never going to do it again. And it's the same. 
getting into a diet where you starve yourself and you're feeling sorry for yourself, all you do is you no, think about it's food. it's not sustainable. So it's not sustainable. It's those little goals. Exactly. I will lose a kg a week. Okay. And, and then, then do, do you just keep yourself motivated from a week to week? It's about, funny enough, women and men tend to deal with it slightly differently. Okay. Women are better if they are public about what they want to do yeah. and they get their friends in on it. Yeah. So it's making it public and a support system. Yeah. And that tends to help them stick to it. And I think once you go public with a, a goal, um, it just makes it that little bit more, you feel almost committed to it. Of course. So it's about commitment. That's actually a good point. I think the beginning of the year, a lot of people make fitness goals especially. I mean, mm. everybody gets a gym contract in the beginning of the year. But I did exactly that. I made my girlfriends sign up with me yeah, so that they go. come to my ex ex exercise classes. Because yes. then I'm answerable to them, not yes. just my own guilty Catholic guilt. <laughs> <laughs> well, you see, then you can change. You can change your goals. Whereas once it's public, it's a little bit, people are going to hold you to it. Do you think people are quite hard on themselves if they don't achieve because at the end of the year you do get to that point where you kind of uh, you know have a look back on your life and think and you reflect did I do in this year what I set out to do and people can then tend to get quite hard on themselves no obviously they can and I think it depends on the person different personalities but I think the other thing is to set one or two reasonable resolutions with their little set of goals rather than having a whole plethora of resolutions that, quite frankly, you're not going to keep. So rather have one, stick to it, at the in, in next year you can set another one. Exactly. So you said earlier you want to spend more time with your loved ones. Where's your diary? Have you, diary, you, know, have you sort of penciled those in? How yeah. are you going to achieve it? And very often, if we're not careful, life runs away with us. Yeah. And at the end of the year, we think, damn, well, I was going to do that, but it just hasn't happened. Yeah. I also want to learn a new language, which means that's also a very good way to roping in your friends and family members to perhaps learn with you. Absolutely. And then you can speak to each other in the new language yes. as well. Yes, but then you need to set that time, because learning a new language is quite a strenuous thing, and it's going to take time. But it's yeah. doable, but you have to actually build it into your day. Exactly. Yeah. And can, do, you, do you think it's, it's important, I suppose, or healthy to consider that resolution every day? How do you re-inspire yourself to stick to those same ideas? Well, I think there are lots of things. You can create a, a screensaver on your computer that reminds you of your resolution. You can put little notelets up, you know, in the fridge, next mm. to the fridge, in your diary. Find ways that are going to be meaningful to you. Because exactly. every person is different, but you almost yeah. just need to refocus. Some people have a bit of time when they have a quiet time in the morning, almost a meditation, or they like to have a little prayer time, and bring those resolutions into that time as well and remind yourself, because it is, it's about changing, changing the way we do yeah. things. Great to have to you, Dawn. Thank you. You Pleasure. certainly have helped me to uh, stay focused. I'm actually going to get Danilo a little wallpaper of a Victoria's Secret model for his phone to keep him motivated. Oh, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> After the break, we're joined by author JJ Tabane to chat about the state of our country and what lies ahead for South Africa in 2016. And if you're a fan of the races, the 2016 Met is coming up at the end of January and we have an exciting competition to announce. So stay right where you are. Willies and I collaborating to raise 100 million rand through the My School program. Are you with us? Welcome back. You're live on SABC3. This is Afternoon Express. Thank you so much for joining us. But right now, our next guest in the loft, we're very, very excited to have one of South Africa's leading media and communication specialists, a community activist, and a business executive. Now, he is the founder and host of Frank Dialogue, a regular newspaper columnist and the author of Let's Talk Frankly, which is a compilation of satirical tongue-in-cheek letters to South African people of influence who are called upon to use their public presence and role to change the course of events in society and, of course, improve the level of public decourse. With his critical eye and well-informed mind, he's here to chat to us about what lies ahead for 2016, what the main events are and who the main players will be, as well as what South Africans have to look forward to or 
backwards too. Joining us in the loft is Mr. JJ Dabani. Welcome to Afternoon Express. Thank you so much. Lovely to meet me. you. Nice to I always meet hear you. your voice on the radio. It's now lovely to finally sure, put nice a, to a face to, to the name. Let's talk, tell me a little bit, brief description about Let's Talk yeah, Frankly. Quickly, basically, Let's Talk Frankly is a set of letters to influential South Africans. So I've written to about 21 South Africans from, yeah. right from Gwedeman Tasha right up to President Zuma is the last letter. There's also <laughs> a, a, a 22nd letter to somebody called the Signal Gemma. You should all know who that is. Uh -huh. I'm still wondering who that is. But essentially, it's it's just not just to politicians. We've written also to religious leaders like uh, Ray Macaulay, to business people like Petrus Mutsipe mm -hmm. and, 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 and Nikki Oppenheimer. So the idea is to, is to really encourage uh, these leaders, right, to do more to change the course of debate in society. There, there's, there's a lot of... Uh, a fear for people to speak out about what they really think about what's going on yeah. around the country. So, so it's, it's also about keeping our leaders accountable. I got you. You know, uh, if your minister does something crazy, what, when, where are you going to really say to your minister, can you please tell me what you are thinking? Mm. You know, are you going to call him to an ANC branch? I don't know where you get him. So I thought, oh, let's just write them a letter and maybe from time to time we'll get the response, which we do from time to time. Yes, I was about to ask you, of all the people you've written letters to, have any one of them actually read them Not and come back to see and say, JJ, how boss, what is this? Not these particular ones, but there okay. are other, other letters that uh, I, I write. I mean, there are also over 100 of them on Daily Maverick. So sometimes I do get okay. a call from a person I've written to, or they send their spokesperson to say, okay. can you be in order and I would say well you know let, let's 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 continue to talk frankly the idea is to create that conversation oh, so I've been quite you. happy about the responses that I've got people do take them seriously and okay. they do engage others are get annoyed of course and I do get some uh, you know very stinging responses from time to time and that's part of the game absolutely now let's talk about 2016 and what the year obviously has to uh, offer for South Africans mm. let's start with you know education obviously the big first big topic was the metric results and the VIT students say hey you know what we're actually going to carry on with our hashtag feasible yeah. school campaign look I think metric results is always a, a big moment for us to reflect on education mm. um and, and 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 say how our youngsters are doing and and, and also an opportunity to talk about you know, focusing on the future. So I, I think it's a, it's a good thing. I mean, the fact that they, they, they you know, they, they are less, less people passed than last year and so on, really for me, it's neither here nor there. The yeah. issue is it helps us to focus. Mm. Now we're going to focus on university. And last year, when the fees must fall campaign, the focus may have narrowly been on about fees to say, keep them at zero. But this year, I think that the key thing is free education. Mm. Nobody is disagreeing that we've got to ensure that we invest in young people for free education. So I think that's what you're going to see. You're going okay. to see protests starting probably this week or next week. There's one uh, happening right now uh, about absolutely. the registration. Absolutely, it's, absolutely. Yeah. So, so you're going to see now, we're going, it's going to go beyond just saying fees or registration. It's going got to you. say, should we be paying for education for our young people? Okay. Shouldn't this wasted money that gets spent on all sorts of things be spent on education so that in 10 years' time we don't have an uneducated nation? Let's talk about money and the economy. And I mean, today, the RAND again plummeted. Uh, and uh, let's talk about what we're going to see from our new finance minister, Pravin Yeah, Gordon. we all know why it plummeted in the first instance. But I think that that's, that's what makes February so important. So you're talking about the state of the nation address, but the real state of the nation that people are keen on is to hear what Minister Gordon is going to do about wasteful expenditure, about whether he's going to bail out SAA, is he going to fire the board of SAA? Because mm -hmm. today, as we speak, the bank has said no, uh, no more. They've drawn the line in the sand to SAA, mm -hmm. no cash is available and so on. They mm -hmm. are waiting to see, is he going to ensure that people who are prudent, who know what they are doing, are going to be in charge of SAA? Is he going to raise VAT, right? Is he going to raise corporate taxes? Frankly, that's what people are interested in. They may be interested in all sorts of, you know, uh, slogans and so on that often comes with these political speeches. They just want to know, is this man now who's in charge of the economy going to lead us out of this mess that we are in now with the rent, you know, fast approaching 20 rent. Absolutely. Yeah. And I mean, with that said, and, and keeping all of that in mind, obviously yeah. they know, our politicians know, all yeah. the political parties know that there's a local government election absolutely. happening around the corner. Yeah. They're, so they're going to be careful in terms of what they say to citizens? To no, no, Africans? no, absolutely. I mean, let, let's cut through that latter. There are only three players really to, 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 to be serious about. Mm -hmm. The EFF must mm -hmm. now going to, is going to, to, to have to decide, is there a noise? and their gimmicks that they have done in parliament and what's going to translate into votes? That's a simple question that will be answered by this year's elections. The DA, will the Musi magic, the mm. Obama magic of Musi work to bring a new set of, 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 of voters, a mm. new kind of growth? Because the, the, let's, uh, let's face it, the DA has, has, 
reached a particular plateau mm. of growth. And by saying, now we need a black leader, they think that's going to translate into votes. Is it going to happen? This mm -hmm. the elections will answer us. ANC, they've got to, uh, uh, they're in panic mode. Mm. You know, are they going to lose Swan? Swan, the last election was at 49%. How thing at 53, 10% loss. Is that going to uh, uh, go south or north? Mm -hmm. So those are the three players to watch in the local government elections. Okay. And with that said, with leaders and uh, media, yeah. social media particularly, yeah. we've seen a lot happening in the past nine yeah. days. Be careful you know, what you tweet. Be careful what you say. Yeah. But with that said, yeah. how important is freedom of speech in terms of keeping our leaders on top, or on their toes? That's the precisely time? what I was saying earlier about why I wrote the book, to say everyone must say, where you are, shine your light brighter where you are. We know what, you know who is the what council. Mm. You know, has this person contacted you? Mm. If you have a problem, do you know who to talk about, or talk to? Or is just people who are just theoretically part of a party you voted for, but you've never engaged with them as leaders? And I think that the ANC must be commended. This thing about the fact that they're gonna take their candidates to the community, for the community to express itself on yes. those candidates. It's a master stroke. And I think if the other parties don't do that, they're gonna, they're gonna lose out. Gotcha. Now on social media, the, the, as you correctly say, it's a question of, Let's, let's access our freedom, but understand that our freedoms have limitations. Absolutely. Don't just go around insulting people and things going to be okay. That's You've got to take responsibility yeah. for what you say, even in a free society. Yeah, because you and know what? Somebody said on Twitter the other day that 2016 is the, is the year of consequence. You need to be careful what you say because people are fed up. But JJ, yeah. thank you very much for coming. It's we can pleasure. go on and on and on. But for good news for everybody that's watching, we are giving away a copy of his book, Let's Talk Frankly. Trust me, you do want to read this. If you want to walk away with a copy, all you need to do is SMS books, your name and city to 33728. Do you remember SMSs will charge you one rand, cost you one rand fifty, and a T's and C's are available on our website. Jeannie, you're up next. Thank you, Bonang. Now, the most hotly anticipated fashion and horse racing event of the year is just around the corner. On Saturday, the 30th of January, the 2016 Met will be taking over Kenilworth Racecourse in Cape Town, and we cannot wait. This year's rare blend theme is bound to get the fashionistas pulling out all the stops. So let's follow Bonnie as she finds her rare blend. Now, it takes an unusual pairing to come up with a rare blend, which is this year's 2016 Met theme. So I thought I'd pay a visit to my favorite designers, Klug CGDT, for that perfect knockout look. Malcolm and Christian epitomize a rare blend, combining their talents to create a unique brand. Now, you do know that you are my favorite designers. Oh. And when I got the invitation to the Met this year, it said, the theme is rare blend and you were the first people that came to mind. Rare blend is quite interesting, because it makes me think of, sort of exclusivity, uniqueness, rare, obviously, um, precious, quite sophisticated. I think that's quite a nice theme, quite open-ended as well, and then gives us also a chance to like turn it on its head as well and funk it up a bit. So, you know, like, I love my sexy androgyny, I like, well-tailored, fine lines, but with a bit of playfulness and femininity. So I brought you a frame of reference. It's an old classic tux jacket. Well, that's so beautiful because I think that's so, I mean, if we think you, we think completely that, very tailored, but bringing in the feminine touch. So there's definitely this sort of femininity and the tailoredness combined and getting that balance right. One of our big influences over the years has been the sort of traditional Le Smoking tuxedo. I don't know if we can do something like the masculine edge, the suit, jumpsuit yes. kind of vibe. Also maybe to use the tails. Mm. That's well that's what's so exciting mm. about it. I'm also getting images of some tool at the back, you know. It's very important not to go costume. People can sometimes get it a bit wrong where they push it too far, but you can have fun with it because it is the chance to dress up. And it doesn't have to be something that you're wearing every day in the street. And in terms of color, I mean, I, I feel like black tends to fade away and just disappear at an event like that. And I want something that pops. You gotta be careful though, for a tuxedo, it should, if it's gonna be tuxedo, it should be quite classic. Maybe white is a good idea. White could be stunning. White could be amazing. Or maybe even a black and white mix, where we bring in a, I don't know, a bit of a black tuxedo stripe on a white tuxedo. Maybe that's the, 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 the blending, the rare blend to change it a bit. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm already 
absolutely excited about all the ideas that I'm hearing. So what's the next step? And now we have to take measurements and do some sketching. I'm gonna look so gorgeous. <laughs> Stay tuned as we reveal how masculine and feminine influences collide to create a rare blend. Oh, the anticipation is absolutely killing me. I cannot wait to see the final product of Fanny's outfit for the Met. If you want to show off your own rare blend of fashion at the 2016 Met, we are giving away an amazing VVIP experience to one lucky winner and a partner with 24,000 Rand. Prize includes flights, accommodation, and all transfers for the weekend to enjoy the 2016 Met in VVIP style. Simply SMS the keyword Met along with your name and city to double three seven two eight and it could be you remember sms's cost one round fifty each t's and c's do apply so visit our website afternoonexpress.co.za for details after the break we take a look at what lies ahead for the south african economy in 2016 with best-selling author chantelle ilbury stay right where you are Fresh pack. Goodness comes naturally. A very warm welcome back to Afternoon Express. Now, Chantal Ilbury is an independent scenario strategist, facilitator, and best-selling business author of the Fox Trilogy. She's also a guest lecturer on, on scenario planning and game-playing strategy at a number of top business schools and is an accomplished speaker on scenarios and effective strategy in times of uncertainty. Her work has taken her to audiences across the world, and today we are talking about South Africa's strategy for 2016, almost like our New Year's resolutions. Now, what should the country and its leaders, as well as us, the men and women, on the ground to be focusing on to improve the country's current situation. A very warm welcome to you, Chantal. Good to have you on the couch. Thank you. Thanks very much. So, Chantal, let's first begin with game playing theory. I mean, when I was studying at university, that was like a two-year course that we did on, on game playing. It, it, it is quite a complicated system, but just in very basic terms, what is the game playing strategy system? Okay, so I won't go into game theory per mm. se, because it is a theory. Uh, game playing is really what strategy is all about. Um, and I was listening to the cooking cooking show. You know, 2015 was really a smash and shock. Yeah, uh, yeah we went from Good one ones. smash to the next <laughs> shock to the next smash. Yeah. And I think if we're looking at 2016 from the economy perspective and what it looks like for mm. South Africa strategically, um, one would say, well, what is the game going forward? How is mm. South Africa playing the game? Are we a Premier League player or are we actually falling down to second division? The so the concept of the game is really a strategic con concept to say we could get a win-win um, game um, or what generally happens in a game is a win-lose. And yeah. we're in South Africa in 2016. Exactly. So the whole idea is that you compare options and scenarios and you play them out and it's it's teased and it's structured and it's focused and it's it's really interrogated on a very intimate level, which is the exciting part because it's not thumb suck, it's not opinion focused. It really yeah. does allow a system to implement itself in one's mind or, or in a process, see what the outcomes are and then to compare those amongst the other scenarios that could play out. And you come to a sort of conclusion around that. South Africans are, are currently sitting in a very nervous position. I think they're all on the edge of their seats wondering what's going to happen uh, politically, economically, etc. We're, we're in an interesting phase in our, in our country and we've heard all over the news this idea of us being a, uh, like on a trash level or something. What are we, our country sitting Yes, they Currently. talk, uh, you know, it's, a, it's an economic term and it talks about junk status junk or status, a financial yes. term. Um, we won above junk status, so uh, we, we panicking. What does junk status mean? What How long mean? Uh, are we going to take before we get there? Uh, junk status probably, if we were to go to junk status, would probably mm. take about another 18 months to get to. Sure. But that's why 2016 is a particularly important Critical. year in terms of... Um, thinking about junk status. Yeah. What does it actually mean? Well, I suppose you could use the word junk. It's we become a very unstable and not a very savory country in order to lend money to. It's yeah. like going to the bank and saying, I'd like to get a loan, and the bank saying to you, well, um, I know you can pay it back, so I'll give you a loan at 2% interest versus somebody going to the bank and they say, well, I think you're very unreliable. I don't think I'm going to get my money back. Yeah. So either you go at 10% interest or I'm not even going to lend to yeah. you. 
And junk status really from a country perspective means many investments can't take place if yes, you've got junk status. Yes. And it's true, I mean, if you think about just a bank loan, it's something small, maybe you don't get to buy a house, but when a country is reaching themselves as junk status and you can't get yourself loans and things, that has detrimental effects on our economy. So Exactly, country and for businesses yeah. as well. So where are we now currently and what is the game moving forward? What are the strategies we're comparing, even from a leadership perspective? You know, I think we are in a very uncertain position. Um, I think political... From a political perspective, our policy going forward into yeah. 2016 is very, very uncertain. So investors are incredibly nervous around policy. Um, of yeah. course, with the change of the financial minister at the end of last year, hasn't helped anything. Our RAND yeah. is very low. We could say that's because of, of China and what's happening in China, because we can't take South Africa out of the global yeah. context. But it is also because of our own internal challenges. Yeah. And I think that the RAND is an indicator of how the rest of the world is viewing us. Yeah. And spiking last night to 18 um, to, the, uh, to the dollar yeah. is, is worrying. And if you have used the game theory in this context, what is the win-win or the win-lose that, that, that would be the best outcome for our country moving into this 2016? What are you hoping to see? You know, if we could be looking at a Premier League scenario, South Africa is actually still in a Premier League scenario, although if you looked at game theory, we are pretty much in the relegation zone at the moment. <laughs> so what would our hope for 2016 is that all the players actually say, what does Premier League mean? Mm -hmm. How do we need to stay in that Premier League? Yeah. What are some of the leadership where we need to put a stake in the ground yeah. and actually be certain, looking at education, looking at some of our pockets of excellence, <coughs> And, and playing to those pockets of excellence. Let's talk about those, because I think our country is quite pessimistic at the moment, just because of the way that the media has been portraying the country. There, there are some things we're doing incredibly wrong when it comes to our policy, but the things we're doing some really good things in, in our country. What are some of those pockets of excellence that, that we can continue to focus on moving, moving into this year? And how can we as lay people, you know, get involved to help support mm. those? Mm. Well, you know, our financial sector is a pocket of excellence. Uh, it's rated probably about number five in the world. So we really do have a pocket of excellence in that financial mm. sector. Um, education has had some pockets of excellence, although education, I think, is one of the key worries if we're looking at 2016 mm. and in a longer term perspective. Yeah. Because education, those are our leaders of the future. And um, if we're looking at the fees must fall, and we look at priorities around health, um, mm. education, uh, where's the money going to come from mm. and where's it going to be prioritised? And if we do go down on quality, mm. we certainly uh, are not going to continue with the pocket of excellence. Chantal, thank you. So every basically every South African needs to make sure that they're putting their best into acting as though they're in the Premier League and not acting as though they're in the relegation league. Yes. And if we give of our best, it'll start to falter upwards almost until policy, policy does change that way too. I believe so. If we all play the game as a Premier League game. Amazing. Chantal, thank you so much for joining us on the couch. Absolutely appreciate it. And what's very exciting, South Africa, is that we've got her book with us right here in the loft. And today we're also giving away a copy of this book. It is called The Fox Trilogy. Simply all you have to do is SMS the keyword express your name and city to 33728. Remember, those SMSs are charged at 1 Rand 50. T's and C's do apply and are available on our website, afternoonexpress.co.za. So as you can tell from today's show, things are cooking in our country. And so is Bonnie in the kitchen. Thank you, Danilo. Well, obviously, our game in the kitchen is Premier League, isn't it, Tim? Always. And look at that smashing cucumber. Hey, it's like I an experience. I mean, yeah. delivered it. That is amazing. Yeah, well yeah, done. Yeah. Well done. Nothing so beats I'm going. <laughs> I'm going to leave you with that one. Okay. What do I and do the to it? So the prawns and the cucumber. If you can start mixing that, and okay. I'll start getting onto the the dressing for it all. So I'm slicing up some red chili, right. and I've got some green chili as well. I like mixing red and green. Yes, have you noticed it's very that, pretty. that green chili? Oh, pretty, yes. Yeah. And the green chili actually has a more citrus smell and taste. Yes. So I mean, by mixing them, you actually get flavor instead of just heat from chili. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Awesome. So you you're mixing. Ooh, Oops. sorry. You're right. You're right. I'm okay. I'm there okay. There you go. Sorry. You get the pretty spoon. I spilled all your chili. It's okay. all good. So I've got chili in there, and that's the red chili. Uh huh. And then I'm just gonna go with some green chili. Uh huh. As much as you like. I like it quite hot. But we got I the like cucumber it hot. in there. The cucumber's gonna cool it down a bit. Mm hmm So we got some garlic. This looks so amazing. Look at those colors. Some ginger. It does look amazing. Yeah. Doesn't I look like, like the quite smashing like summery. Thing. It is so mm, cool. Mm. You just smash everything. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so okay, so that's ginger, garlic, and the chilies in there. Okay. Now to add some of that salty flavor to the salad, because you need to add salt to yes, food. Yes, we do. I do not do. like when we people do. under season food. <laughs> and today we're not using salt. We're using 
fish sauce. Fish sauce. There we go. It's got a bit of a pong. Yeah. You can smell that already. But once mm. all in there, it starts coming together, making a really cool dressing. It does, but it's a lovely smell. It is. And we got um, rice wine vinegar as well. Okay. And that just delivers the acid. And the acid actually brings out the flavors of everything else of everything that we're using. Together. And then last of all, just a balance, because balance is everything. A little bit of sugar. So sugar. we'll... Just, just, just enough to sweeten sugar. it. Yeah. And we're going to go with brown sugar. Yeah, yeah definitely. Yeah. Yeah. So what we're going to do is we're going to mix that up until the sugar is mostly dissolved. Okay. It'll continue dissolving when it's on the salad. Yes. So cool. what I've done is I'm instead of using just mint, I'm doing mint and basil. And basil. Basil loves prawns and mint loves cucumber. We know that. I love that. But basil actually, loves prawns. they all complement each other. Okay. So dressing okay. looks good. And you're just adding it as it is. You're not like chopping it or... Tearing it? It's totally up to you. I mean, if okay. you want to slice it up really thinly yeah. so you get a mouthful of everything, mm. I actually like having the leaves whole. Yes, yes. So that's my favorite thing. And yep. also, for your guests, they'll see exactly what they're eating. Yes. Totally. So you can continue mixing that up for me. Okay, wonderful. What I've done is I've cooked the whole wheat noodles. Okay. And then I've immediately, once they're cooked again into ice water, that's the trick, shocking everything so we ah, don't overcook anything. Ah. So How that long do also, we cook the noodles for? That takes about three minutes in boiling three minutes. water. With a little salted water always. So we don't want to overcook it, especially Absolutely not. those noodles. Because they turn into like mush. Yeah, yeah. And who wants that? So then all I did was I took a little carving fork, a little two prong, right. made a little fancy old 90s trick when they used to like make the little tools around the carving fork right. and I popped them in the bowl. Uh -huh. So instead of mixing everything together, again, mm -hmm. I like the fact that we're working with big chunks of ingredients. Yeah. So we're doing everything separate. So our guests today were able to see exactly what they're what eating. They're eating. So okay. how about you? You want to come around and I you can do. actually start popping that into... I'm going to let you do that part. Okay. So you can start serving. Each bowl gets a massive... How generous you want to be. Okay, wonderful. Um, so, okay, so you do that. Can and I pop it on the side? On the on side, yeah, there? totally. Such a stylist. I know, right? <laughs> <laughs> so as you're doing it that, I'm going to follow, I'm gonna follow you it. with some mint uh -huh. and some basil. Okay. And then just a little bit of spring onions. I popped the spring onions. I thinly sliced them. Mm -hmm. I popped them into ice water and they started curling like this. Wow. wow that's, that's a, a nice trick. trick. And then just finishing it off with a little bit of lime. Just a little bit of extra acid. I love that the smell of, of the cucumber is stronger when you smash it, Simi. Absolutely. Can I tell you something so funny and don't judge uh -huh. me for this? I actually I'll can't, never judge you. I can't, I'm not oh, judging you. Oh, oh, no, no, that's so funny. Let's judge <laughs> Word for 2016. Yeah. I don't eat cucumber. <laughs> You don't eat cucumber, why? I know, and I developed this recipe. But it's for all of you. I know you love it. So do I you it juice it, maybe, ever? Um, I do. Then I just find that the flavor, I know it's, it's quite weird, but it's supposed to be a subtle flavor. For me, it's quite strong and oh, overpowering. Wow, so no, that's I don't, very I, interesting. So this is all for you. All for me. There we go. More so, for me. Okay. So like I said, every chunks of herbs, instead of chopping them up, try okay. adding them whole to your salads. Yes. I mean, it just makes it more wholesome, and you can actually awesome. see, like I said, you see what you're eating. Okay. The so kumar, funky little ceramic pan. I love it. Dropping. But pop over to our website, afternoonexpress.co.za, for the full recipe and shopping list. We'll see you after the break. Don't go away. Five Roses blends only the top two leaves of the finest Ceylon teas. Because nobody makes better tea than you and Five Roses. Salati Plantation Select adds subtle sweetness to toffees, caramel, bran muffins or sprinkled into a spicy curry. Salati. Always good, always sweet. Afternoon Express, we're live right here on SABC3. We've got all our incredible guests at the lot. Before we touch into our delicious dinner today, we've got a few more questions. A little bit more Absolutely. Time now, you do know that it, this is going to be the year. Yes. yes. This is going to be a great year. I can Absolutely. Feel it. Absolutely. And you know how I know this? Huh? Because Leonardo DiCaprio won a Golden Globe. <laughs> yeah. which means, no, he's won it three times before, so that's fine. But finally, I think the I Academy... Think he's get his Oscar. I think he's going to get the Oscar this year. Yeah. Absolutely. If Leo gets the Oscar this year, I'm telling you, if he asks, I would Marry him. You <laughs> <marry> him. <laughs> I saw a meme that the, before he actually gets his, himself an Oscar, somebody is going to make a movie about him not winning the Oscar, and that person is going to win the Oscar for playing him. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It's going to happen. Oh, but he gave Lady Gaga we love the look at the Golden Globes. Uh, like, did, did any of you see the Golden Globes and stuff? No. 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 <laughs> <laughs> he was too busy. How rude of us. How rude of us. Too many lists. Yeah. 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 I really, I think over the nine days we've yeah. seen, you know, sort of like the, the impact of social media yeah. and the mm -hmm. impact of, uh, you know, the, the consequences of what can happen, mm. about your freedom of yeah. speech, whatever yeah. it is. Yeah. Talking yeah. about, yeah, Twitter and Facebook, do you think it's a dangerous or an effective No, platform? it's effective. It actually gives expression to what you can call citizen journalism. 
but mm. also active citizenship. There's mm. just too many people who just don't bother. And when something like this spiral thing happens, then you realize, oh, hey, mm -hmm. we can't be asleep here. We've got to do something to make sure this country exactly. that's beautiful, that there's so much potential, can actually succeed. Wow, mm. wow. Mm. Okay. What's, the, what's the most controversial letter you've written in your book? Uh, I think the letter say? to the president. To the president? <laughs> it's most con I, I, I got someone for that one to say, hey, what are you busy with? And the one to Jeannie? The it's nobody not, was supposed to know about that one. It's not too controversial. It's not too controversial. No, don't worry Is about it. Is it in that book? No. And the other bit of no, the book? No, I'm going to look under my pillow. <laughs> No, I'm just advising you need to, 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 to mm -hmm. choose a man who can cook. Yeah. <laughs> Guys, I must ask all of you, seeing as we've got all of the experts in the building, What's I think as, as lay men and women in our country, people don't really know what to expect, we don't know what to do, we can't change policy, etc. As people who know what's going on in government, who knows what's going on policy-wise, etc., are we okay? Are we going you, to be okay? Why do you say you can't change policy? Oh, the you can. Okay. Oh, the you kids must just speak out. <laughs> at your school, at your school, where your kids go, yes. you can change policy because you don't go to meetings of okay. the governing body, and then you complain late. Right, yeah. you know? it's about being present. Yeah, you must be active. 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 Be, uh, you know, I, I yeah. think there's an inertia, and I think social media is mm. going to change the game. Absolutely. And actually Absolutely. shift that inertia. Absolutely. So um, I mean, you saw what let's happened be focused. In Egypt. So accurate. What yeah. happened in Egypt can happen here if people are not careful, yeah. Yeah. you know, and not take for granted. You know, there were 48 million or 28 million impressions on Twitter alone in the first two days of the Sparrow incident. 28 million yes. wow. were the biggest Twitterers. Mm. But we should now go beyond Twitter and do something yes. in your street, in your yeah. church, everywhere. But I've seen, we've seen them happening with Penny Sparrow, with Fees Must Fall. Yeah. We, there is with so Gareth much Cliff. power. Yeah. With yeah. Yeah. There's so much Absolutely. power in social media. Yeah. So can we say 2016 will be the year of, like you said, social media and citizens? More about citizenship. citizenship. So yeah. 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 I love yeah. that. I yeah. love you all. Well. Thank you all for coming and, and joining us. And uh, I really wish Great you all a fantastic 2016. Yeah. And to everyone, of course, for watching. But do make sure that you join us again tomorrow for Afternoon Express. And tune in early during the first 15 minutes of the show. We're joined by the legendary David Kramer and Alistair Isabel to chat about their musical dedicated to the 50th anniversary of uh, the Group Areas Act in District 6. And in the kitchen, we're making a marinated yellowtail with garlic croutons, darling, where the private chef, wow. Neil Anthony, is going to be fantastic. Make sure mm -hmm. you're back again tomorrow at 4 p.m. right here on SABC3. Happy eating! Ooh, this yummy. Let's see. Another feel good production. Hi, YouTubers. Thank you so much for watching the show. Be sure to not miss another episode by clicking subscribe right over there. <laughs> and we'll see you every day. Afternoon Express. Enjoy.